Who would strike me as somebody who has their clothing yeah, completely uh, coordinated? Ish, yeah. The first time I went to his place, I was like, oh, you got it. I'm surprised you didn't wear a bow tie today. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. Okay, you guys, when it comes to navigating the entertainment industry, our guest is a total pro. He's been representing talent for decades. He is the CEO and founder of Vox here in Los Angeles, and he's flat out awesome. Thank you. We're getting buzzed with the amazing Wes Stevens. Thank you. That's Wes great. Stevens. Awesome. Wes, That's very nice. Always dapper. Thank always you. Always dapper. Thank you. Incredible, man. Yes. We're so excited to have you here. I always feel like people get here at the right time. And I feel like Everything has this is pace, yes, sure. this is the right time for you to be here. Love it. Um, you know, we've all, we when we talk about you, it's like one of the things we love is just your candor, your honesty, your integrity <laughs> about like just You've gotten in trouble this for that it. a few times. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, well, you know, sometimes well, people want to hear what they want to hear. About. Today yeah. is not about putting things in necessarily just a nice way. Today we're going to tell the truth. Truth, Hashtag yeah. Truth, yeah. So because like that's that. the only way that mm -hmm. Wes knows. We don't how have to be to unkind, say. but yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, let's you cut to it. Constructively. I like it. Candid. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Let's do this thing. On that note, uh, so you've worked in the industry for a long time, but you decided to launch your own agency. That's yeah. a behemoth undertaking. What made you want to do that? I think, I mean, from the day I started as an assistant um, 25 years ago, um, I always had ideas about how things could be done, where we could increase efficiencies, how you could use business practices, you know, whether that was marketing or finance practices. Mm. And, and my background was, you know, in school I was producing theater and dance and had a gallery and it was on a business side of art, mm -hmm. but my degree was in, you know, commerce, um, was in finance and marketing. So I think I had a business mind towards something and saw, you know, structures and inefficiencies that I thought could be improved. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think our business has a habit, I'm talking entertainment as a whole, of doing things. So that's the way we do it. And you're like, yeah, yeah right. but does anyone looked at our growth percentages? Has anyone looked at our booking ratios? Has anyone looked at, you know, why why are all these people sitting in a lobby when we're in a place where we have a we could we could schedule on a nonlinear basis by basically putting everything online and mm -hmm. we could potentially we could have a booth, but we don't necessarily need to have three or four booths. We could have everyone recording at home and the volume of activity you could do. I mean, yeah. so I saw it's interesting because at the beginning, I think the opportunity was I wanted to be able to do a different kind of marketing mm -hmm. and spend money on that. Mm -hmm. And that was not something that my bosses at the time, we necessarily saw eye to eye. They were extremely supportive and remained supportive and remained friends. Um, but and basically, I was an assistant, became an agent, became department head partner. And then right after the commercial strike, um, we had conversations about some restructuring within the company and it was there was an opening there and i said can i buy the department that i had helped build and set up box um you know, so that's kind of the, the trajectory yeah. of how it happened and that all happened within i'd say about seven years of coming to la so it was mm. pretty rapid wow, yeah. Fast, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah i've been doing this 25 years and the agency is i think or eight, I think we turn 18 this mm -hmm. coming January, or maybe, I don't know. I think Ooh, it's, you I can think vote. It, I think Good it's 18. You. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so can't <laughs> it's, drink, but That's can amazing. Vote. That's um, amazing. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I think a lot of it had to do with wanting to tackle the business at a more proactive level, um, you know, and, and shape, the de shape our destiny and the destiny of our clients. Right, and evolve. I mean, you guys are yes. really you're not in the same place you were 10 years ago, five no, years ago, can't. two years ago. You guys are really always looking at um, absolutely what's happening now and not just like you said, how things have been done. Yeah, and then, I mean, I think a business is very much a living entity and it, it, it requires uh, diversity to grow. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think 
yeah, we we definitely have never, it, it's never been enough. Like um, mm. just doing VO is exciting, but we wanted, you know, like from the minute I started animation was, it certainly existed, but it didn't exist the way it did now. And right. that was a big part of how I built my name in the business was, was representing people in animation yeah. and really jumping into that field and, you know, and then gaming came and, you know, and then, you know, as we've changed as a company, we became, you know, we, we started representing more and more of our clients for on camera endorsements. And then we started, you know, signing social influencers and representing, you know, both the celebrity clients in the social space, but also influencers in that space. And yeah. Yeah. And, and, is, and is that part, Wes, of like, you know, an agency who's, uh, like Vox, who's more proactive to how things are changing, where things are going, and you guys are looking at things and going like, you know what, in order to grow with the times, this is what we need to do. Is that what you guys do? Like really, really look at, at where things are going? Yeah, I think, I think whether you're running an agency, a management company, a production company, um, you know, or your talent, if you don't have there's your core business in this moment, mm -hmm. the what is. Yeah. But if you don't also have a contextual broader awareness mm -hmm. of what is going on around you in the competitive landscape, um, you're probably gonna miss the trend. You, you, you can focus very heavily on the trend of this moment, but you're not necessarily going to see the trends that are coming. Yeah. Right. And the trends that are coming may be obsolescence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The trend that may coming may be decentralization, you know, through websites, you know, and through, through, um, online, you know, casting sites and things yeah. of that nature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it may be that, oh, wow, look, here's streaming and where do commercials fit in the streaming space? You know, there are some, but less and less, yeah. Yeah. um, yeah. you know, and on and on, you know, terrestrial radio still exists, but you know, how many of us, listen to that on a daily basis. I know, very uh, yes. you know? for me, and, yes. and, yeah, very little. And so then where does that have, you know, where does that announcer yeah. fit? Mm -hmm. um, so, I, you know, I think running a great business, whether you are talent, every everyone running a business, whether you're an individual or a team, you know, is, is CEO of, you know, the entity and needs to have right. a global awareness of what's going on, which is, I you know, I always say when we're hiring assistants, I need someone, and, and I mean this for assistants, for agents, for everybody in the company, I need someone who can not only see the immediate transaction, but also the context. So not just right. the forest, not just the tree, mm -hmm. but the forest around it, mm -hmm. and be able to reference back and forth between the two. Wes, how, in, in, especially with, with Vox, and, I'm, and when I ask you these questions, I really wanna know more just in your world, because it's changing in everybody's too, but in your world of being an agent, how has social media changed what you guys do and how you do it, or has it? Yeah, of course it has. Um, it, it um, you know, the, with social media, what the internet is doing in general and will continue to do is it is uh, decentralizing all the pro all processes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in time, we'll watch governments become decentralized, currencies become decentralized. So naturally, um, processes that were, that had a gatekeeper and a layers of middlemen, which I am one of them, mm. probably are looking at futures that we're either going to have to innovate and prove ourselves more relevant, or we will become obsolete. You know, obsolete. Yeah. Um, so I think the the internet, and we'll come back around to social media. You know, is this incredible driver of decentralization? Um, you still may have hubs and, and, and portals through which you go that curate or collect. Right. But ultimately, you can have talent all over the world that are all tuning into one place, you know, and you don't necessarily need um, the middlemen between the consumer, you know, and the, and the product. Um, so that, that goes on, I think, for talents. Yeah. And I think that mm -hmm. goes on for... Um, it's going on for the consumer in general with the relationship to celebrity, to personalities, yeah. which is why a social influencer, the barrier of entry to become a celebrity in today's marketplace is dramatically lower than when I started yeah. right. my career. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's highly impactful. It, and, and it also means that 
we have an instantaneous feedback loop in most cases, which also means like you you can't cut corners and and you um, uh, the consumer has the ability to vote more aggressively right. than they ever have right. been able to in terms of sentiment and opinion. Um, so yeah, it's, it's I mean. What do you it, mean specifically about with cutting corners with respect to? You know, I mean, just look at our look at our world today. Mm -hmm. Like you, um, we are being held to higher and higher standards. It may not always feel that way in terms of controversy. Right. The controversy is ultimately our social media, like us. It's us as as a society sorting out what we are going to find acceptable and what we are not going right. to find mm -hmm. acceptable, and the dialogue between. So yeah. I think you know, in terms of um, quality. Um, you, you, there's no hiding. I think that's probably one of the biggest things social yeah. media has done for us yeah. is if you suck, it's, it's out there. Yes. Yeah. If you're amazing, Forever. it's out there. <laughs> yeah. If you're amazing most of the time and here's your one moment of suck, it's still out there and it doesn't go away very quickly. And I mean, social media has also changed it in that, you know, we're also in a climate right now where it's, it's guilty till proven innocent. Mm -hmm. Because Completely. of social sentiment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I've watched yeah. situations where celebrity clients have been accused of things and seven figures worth of deals have evaporated from my desk in minutes. And then the client is exonerated, you know, and, and not by rehabilitation, but literally like the individual ac right. you know, who accused on Twitter or wherever yeah. comes back around and says, oh, well, you know, maybe, you know, and th those, you know, public sentiment. Yeah. Yeah. Major commercial brand A, B, or C does not start picking up the phone. Why? Because online, the controversy is still right there. Yes. On the search, in the you know, in the search um, criteria. So I, I think, and, and and the other thing about social media and the internet is it's a grand equalizer. Look yeah. at, I mean, like we've all been doing this quite some time, and the barriers event used to be like voiceover is very hard to break into. Mm -hmm. It's not. Yeah. It, it, it's still. Difficult to make, it's more difficult than ever to make a six or seven figure salary in this space or income in this space, right. which is, you know, if you're going to live in Los Angeles, they're now saying like, you can't live here effectively without $150,000. Yeah. Well, the $150,000 voiceover yeah. campaign is not easy to build anymore. Yeah. Right. It was never easy, but I think it's interesting because I do think it was... It, for me, it felt like there were more of them when, you know, when we were agenting and controlling the mechanisms. And some of that is that we've also watched the internet. And I think it's all, you can't really separate just social media out of it. I think it's right. all in right. it. I think social media yeah. is a factor of it. But, you know, one of the things that we've watched is this proliferation of non-union work, mm -hmm. yep. which I think the strike introduced the idea and you think about where the strike occurred. It's like that's almost 20 years ago, the big commercial strike. Mm -hmm. But we introduced the idea of, of, of non-union work. But we had not this ability to access the talent directly did not yet exist. exist yeah. yes. Now it exists in, in, ma in major Everywhere. ways. Yeah. And you've got groups of people that in the interest of I must work will accept you know, Everything. horrific, mm -hmm. egregious terms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The problem is, as I've learned, you know, I'm, I've counseled many clients over the years about, you know, I, the reason why you have an agent is I have an ability to manipulate silence. I have an, and sometimes silence is, I know it's a lot of money that's on the table, but there's more. And if we don't blink, we'll get it. Right. Yes. And, you know, and, and you have to be able to hold that line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, the reason why you hold that line on many things, you know, and I've explained this to clients, it's like, once we give, we don't get back. Yeah. And so we're watching that go on. And I think, you know, um, the access to information, the direct feedback loop, the direct access to talent, talent's access to the buyer, people setting their own terms has, has definitely driven a rapid um decline, you know, yeah. in terms of, you know, I don't want to say a I, I get tired of the hyperbole is the race to the bottom. Right. There's still some very big deals doing going on. Yes. Like I, I still, I, you know, I'm still doing some really interesting deal structures and whatnot, but you know, we definitely, um, you know, social media, it's, it's made it very exciting, but it's also made it very complicated. Yeah.
So when you look at talent, do you look at their presence on social media and how they approach social media? Does that influence you at all when you're looking at? Dep- I mean, it depends on the talent. So, yeah. you know, one of my businesses is a podcasting network. And yeah, mm-hmm. yeah sure, we look at those numbers because we're going to drive audience out of that, especially if we're creating a podcast from scratch versus one that, you know, has a X number of downloads and we're going to try to, you know, grow that that number looking mm-hmm. at a social influencer obviously we're looking at that we're looking at a celebrity we're looking at that mm-hmm. um and, and you know and certainly if you walk in our door you know and you're do i think social numbers are driving any commercial talent promo talent trailer talent um no i don't think that it's make that i don't think it has any impact yeah animation talent it has an impact gaming talent it has an impact mm-hmm. um I mean, I think it's obvious which markets yeah. I think probably have yes. an impact. So yeah, if you walk in the door and you've taken the time to cultivate a real a real um, audience and you have a relationship to them, we we look at everything. When you walk in a door, you're an inventory of pot. We want to take an inventory of possibilities, right. mm-hmm. and so every bullet you have in your you know belt in your arsenal that we can load and leverage. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going to be excited about. So if you walk in the door and you've built some really interesting assets, whether that's a podcast, you know, social following, yeah. a combination of these things, then sure, we're, it's, yeah. it's going to drive, yeah. it's going to help the conversation. Yeah. You know, is it a decide, do we have clients who have great careers who don't have any real social following? Yes. yes. You know? Yeah. Um, that, that's great, by the way. And and I, I hear a lot of people that are always asking, oh, you know, I really want to do commercials or almost any genre now saying, but, you know, the business is so dominated by celebrities now that is there even a chance for me? Um, uh, can you dive a little bit into into that? Because I, I know that you, you represent a lot of celebs. Sure. Yeah, I mean, the celebrity business is booming. Uh it's insane the level of celebrity that is now willing and, and available to do commercials. Mm-hmm. Um, there's still tons of room for the non-celebrity commercial performer um, in that uh, you just you, you, the celebrities may be the spokes, but there still may be tag work. The right. celebrity may be doing some aspect of the copy, but there's other aspects that aren't. Or maybe, maybe yeah. just on camera yeah. and then yeah. voice. I mean, the, it, I mean the, 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 it just budgets yeah. are not, and yeah. in, in availability and the nature of the deal. Right. Um, I, think, I think it depends on the market and the segment, obviously regional markets. And, and it, again, going back to this idea that like there's a, de- a democratization of the marketplace and equalization mm. and this open access point that is taking some aspects of my job out of, out of you know, um, making some of the things I do slightly obsolete, yeah. obsolete yeah. you know, those gigs are, and the non-union gigs, you know, mm-hmm. I think are, you know, there's, those aren't celebrity gigs. Right. Yeah. So I, think, I mean, is there, when you speak to the, the buyer, is there a motivation for them to go celebrity versus rank and file actor? Like, do they it's, have it's, a, yeah. is it their childhood crush or you know i mean is it like what is is there a specific motivation i think it's it's dry i think it's driven by look we are in a marketplace that has the capability to quantify in terms of data analysis Mm -hmm. you know at very specific levels what the impact you know of you know when, when someone calls me for some of my clients i can give them very granular data on who the de- who is it that follows yeah. right. my client? Yes, um, and that data is also available to all these ad agencies and brands. So I think when they decide to spend X hundred thousand to millions of dollars on a celebrity, there is um, a specific return, and 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 they have. I don't think there's many things done these days. You know, shooting from the hip. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Um, which may also be why sometimes we get frustrated with uh, you know some of the lacks of creativity. I think things get a yeah. bit, you know, you can get a bit too um, formulaic. Over anal- yeah. Yeah, formulaic and yeah. overly yeah. analyzed. So I, I think it just depends on what the objective is mm-hmm. and what what the yeah. 
messaging is and you know and yeah sometimes i think celebrities are in something that don't need to be um and some you know maybe and we we, have to, we watch it even in film and television like there's something great about not our suspension of disbelief right. increases when it's a no name yeah True. And so i think totally. the same thing yes, goes on, go when on yes a character is created within and we also love in animation and 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 and, and even in these kind of character you know creations within commercials and whatnot that might exist we we do love hearing who is that? What is yeah. that familiar right. voice? Right. And it lends, you know, like when someone asked me, why do people hire celebrities? And I, and I said, a, a big part of it is that when the celebrity walks to the door, they have a very clear sense of their signature. Mm -hmm. And there's the, a part of the story is told right out of the gate. Yeah. So we don't have to get caught up. Right. So like, so like we're jumping right in the middle of the story with certain things to find about what mm -hmm. is the character of this person. And, um, you know, that, that I think there's something to be the, to the for the non celebrity talent. They should take some beats from that, which is, yeah, have a point of view. Become your own have, celebrity. Have a signature. No, but, you, but, yeah. but to, yes, yeah. have a brand. Be your own celebrity. Yeah. Because I think there's something very um, charismatic and appealing about the talent that walks in and says, there it is. Yes. Well, and it, ins am. it instills confidence in the buyer because they yep. know they're going to get what they need. They're not going to have There's no to... wobbliness in the messaging. Yes. Yeah. You know, if, if I know who I am and I show up, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, I have a good sense of who Wes is. Yeah. I definitely have a sense of who you, I mean, you guys have very specific brands. So yeah. I think there's a quality that's, that's like, okay, well, I get what I'm going to get there. Yes. The same thing can go on for talent, rank and file. Mm -hmm. to celebrity, which is if I know what I'm going to get, I'm going to be more inclined to go. And, and I know it's quality and it's consistent. I'll keep returning. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. I love that. Since we were talking about, you know, union versus non-union stuff, I mean, can we talk about, about maybe uh, non-union work that can be converted into union? Um, because maybe the, the buyers just aren't really aware that yeah, they mean, have I mean, more look, protection we... under that or maybe even save money. We have, we have deals that come in that, that and there's not a lot to say about it because they're either going to be willing to go or they're not going to go. Mm. And you can either educate them or you can't educate them. Right. Um, but when I mean, we have buyers, as an agency, we would always prefer a work union. Of course. I'd prefer my talent work union. Um, they're protected. There's a myriad of reasons. Right. All positive. Yeah. Um, we're in a different marketplace. Yeah, uh, I have clients who want to work. I have clients who need to work. Yeah, you know, and so we have to look at. Um, I'm, I, you know, I have. To, I'm a for-profit business. I have to look at where money, you know, wh what's coming in and where the market trends going. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah, I think wherever you can, I'm, I'm a proponent of. I think I hit my mic. Sorry. Wherever we can, uh, push for that, educate, elevate. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and I think the the we need the union to work with us, and I think it's it they are I think more uh, they have more dexterity than necessarily has always been there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think they have to, and that everyone I think is trying to come up with, um, you know, to to be to be smart about right. how we can right. make sure. How? Yeah. It, well, and we just have to be realistic. Yeah. Like I know some of the concern way back when was versions you know, and paying for all of them. And then you talk to a producer who says, I can't afford to do this union right. because we have to cut X hundred versions of the spot in order to fit all the different kinds of handsets. Mm -hmm. I mean, so the terms have to evolve yeah. with yeah. the technologies, right. with the needs of right. the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I think it speaks yeah. to too how you run Vox is that you're not just sitting in the now, you're f always forecasting. And I think... If the union can, you know, it's not the now media, the now business, it's thinking ahead about what's and it's, it's, happening. It's just always the challenge. It's a huge challenge and and, and it's an expensive challenge. Like mm -hmm. I, you know, Vox done well and, and, and I'm very fortunate and grateful, but I can tell you, you know, the process of innovation is, is not without its risks mm -hmm. and costs. And for every win I have, I can I definitely have a handful of you know um, 
ventures within the company, ideas that we spent some time, some money, some resources on that yeah. the market shifted, yeah. something changed, it didn't work out, it wasn't the right direction. Mm-hmm. You know, what, you know, so. Can, yeah. can I ask two part question? Number one, to an agency, what area of voiceover would be the most lucrative uh, genre of, of, of the, the industry? And for a voice actor, what genre would be easiest or most valuable for them to start with? To launch. Mm. I think it's so hard to read that these days, Chuck, because I think the goalposts are moving so rapidly. Yeah. I'm thinking, so for me as an agent and within, I mean, the staples remain lucrative. You know, commercials remain very lucrative for us. And yeah. if you can break into promos and trailers, that's obviously some pretty big ticket numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, super coveted, hard. I mean, like, it, 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 you, it's, I don't know if I would say people, Hey, chase that dream because yeah. it's it's a real long shot. Um, animation, you know, although you, not a lot of celebrities doing promos and trailers. Well, because they don't. Uh, yeah. they, <laughs> they, they, th- that part is true, and, yes. and they it will never happen. Yes, yeah. it's the they're not going to respond yeah. to calls for to, for recordings you know, in matter of seconds, minutes, and yeah. hours. Yes. But um, you know, so I think. All right, so let's look at where, where are things going. Um, gaming will in, will continue to grow exponentially. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you can become, there's still space within the gaming market for a non-celebrity performer to become uh, Known. a marquee, yeah. you know, character, and that can turn into really sweet gigs, yeah. and we can turn into multiple, you know titles in a franchise as well as add on pack. It can be a very lucrative mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Um, I think that market, you know, remains one to keep an eye on. And there's room in that market for just great actors as well as for people that can get into performance capture and move plus do mm-hmm. an interesting voice. There's, there's some, it, it, that's an exciting market. Animation, you know, we're doing more animation than we've ever done. Um, the feature side of the market, celebrity driven, yep. but there is some yeah. space in that. Yeah. Um, I think if you want to break an animation, be flexible. We have clients doing, you know, um, paid table reads, scratch recordings, right. you know, and then they get upgraded into the film. Um, daytime and feature animation, or daytime and, and, and primetime animation continue to grow and grow. I think with the number of streaming outlets that are coming online, yeah. there's a lot of yeah. opportunities. Um, you know, and and and, and those the numbers are still good, and some of it's that one audition series regular. It's an annuity. Um, markets that I think are are new and really interesting to me are where I'm doing the most interesting deals and making and the biggest ticket deals are representing clients that are the voices of a character that is a brand. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I have clients that like the voice of Alexa, I have the original Siri, Um, the social media brands I represent are, I don't represent YouTube influencers. Is is that a secret gig? Like if you're the voice of Alexa, can can people not know who you are or? Yes, it's a, it's, that's a, that's a huge NDA. So So you can't tell us who it is. I cannot. He's anyone. Not even Chuck. privately. Like if we no, weren't Chuck. on doing a show right now. <laughs> Wes is a vault. You will Wait not a crack. Wes, let me read your mind. <laughs> it's not worth okay. it. Okay. So he's um, like, we're done here. Well, that concludes part one with the awesome Wes Stevens, Fox Inc. And we're gonna be back next week with part two. So don't yes, miss it. Yes, we will. You don't want to miss it for sure. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and thank you guys so much for watching. We love you and just remember, you've you've always got time time for a little buzz. Neo Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosthatrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.